and it will tell us if it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. Okay. Um, but in either case, before we start getting bogged down in lots and lots and lots of fun calculations, right, they are fun. Uh, before we get that, think about, okay, so if we have, for, let's think about this, for a exothermic process, for an exothermic reaction, okay, so that combustion reaction, propane, oxygen, okay, it's transferring energy from the system to the surroundings, right? We're all on board with that. So, uh, for, uh, just from a conceptual standpoint, where does that energy come from? Yeah, so where's this, where's the system getting that energy? Okay, so, so systems doing what? Systems transferring heat, so that means it's what? Losing energy. Right? Where's that energy coming? Where's it losing energy from? Where's that energy coming from? The bonds, the chemical bonds. So what type of energy do you think is it losing? Well, what are the two types of energy? Potential and kinetic energy, okay? So when it's gonna do a reaction, we said there's only really only two ways we can go for chemical reactions. We're going up, either uphill or downhill, right? And if we're going downhill, we're going from high potential energy to low potential energy, that's what an exothermic reaction is. We're going from high potential energy to low potential energy. Where's that energy gotta go? It can't just disappear, it has to go to the surroundings. So that's what an exothermic reaction is. We're going from high potential energy to low potential energy, and that potential energy is from the chemical bonds. The relative position of the electrons around the nuclei, what we talked about very early on in this uh, unit. Okay. So where does the uh, energy come from? Come from the chemical bonds. The potential energy of the bonds. And so for if delta H is negative, okay, that's an exothermic reaction, we're going from high potential energy to low potential energy. So now let's think about this in reverse. Okay, let's think about <coughs> a endothermic reaction, a reaction that's absorbing energy. Where is that energy going? This one's a little bit trickier because it can be going two places, and it probably is going two places. If it's absorbing heat, a lot of that could just be going to kinetic energy and temperature could go up. Okay, that, that happens, that's definitely. But also, if we're going from you know, if it's a chemical reaction, we could be going from, of course, a low potential energy reactant to high potential energy reactant. So that re some of that energy could go into potential energy, putting those electrons in higher potential energy bonds. And so that's what's happening with an uphill reaction. The energy is going to push the ball back uphill to push the chemical system to a higher, higher potential energy state. All right, so this is usually how we show uh, delta H's or enthalpy changes for reactions. You'll see the reaction, and then you'll have it listed delta H equals negative 2484 kilojoules. Um, but if we look back at the equation that I just showed a while ago, we said that delta H 
was uh, heat interaction per moles. Okay? So what types of, so we're gonna have joules, we've got joules or kilojoules for our units for energy. And then moles, probably have moles for units for moles, especially on mole day. Okay? So this would be kilojoules per mole. But when we list it for a reaction, it just listed as kilojoules because this is a stoichiometric ratio, right? meaning that we're always going to go back to our coefficients. So it's not just per mole. It's per however many moles are in the reaction, or the, rather the equation. So the way you would read this, okay, so this is negative 2044 kilojoules. So this is exothermic. That's what the negative tells you. So you're getting 2044 kilojoules of energy per one mole of C3H8, and that's propane. How many uh, moles do you get for O2? Well, it's 2044 kilojoules per five moles of O2. So it's always going back to the coefficients, and that's the stoichiometry uh, component of this. Okay. <coughs> so eventually, we could, I mean, if we want, I mean, it'll be your call, Actually, probably not my call. Um, we'll use some, uh, this is conversion factor. So you can say this is negative 2044 kilojoules per one mole of C3H8. Or you can say it's you get negative 2044 kilojoules of energy out for every uh, three moles of CO2. 